Good morning, church. Sisters and brothers in Christ, let us go now to the Lord and enter to God's holy presence with awe and thanksgiving. Wherever you are right now, you are in God's house, and we are all welcome in this place. Praise God. Praise God. Please join in the call to worship. Arise, shine, shine, for your your light light has has come. come. Stand Stand up, a new new day day is dawning. dawning. A new year is born. Fresh Fresh and clean. clean. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God God is with us. us. On every path we take. No matter where we go. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the stars still shine. Where Christ is present. And voices sing in praise. Please rise and join me as we sing together. Good Christian friends, rejoice. Number 224 in your red hymnals or on your screens. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say. News, news, Jesus Christ is born today. Ox and ass before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. News, news, Jesus Christ was born for this. He hath opened heaven's door and ye are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this, Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. News, news, Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting hall. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. Let us join together in the opening prayer. Jesus, Jesus, Prince Prince of of Peace, Peace, as we we begin begin this new year year together, together, we realize realize just just how much our world needs you. As As we we now bow our heads, 
We are aware of both the depth of the hurt and the possibilities for healing that you bring. Like the Magi of old, we seek someone who will guide us and lead the way. Even as your day is dawning, we turn our attention to your grace. Let the mistakes of our past be washed away and open up the future to your authority and power. For we place our trust in the babe of Bethlehem and lay down our crowns before the Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried in their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Gospel reading this morning is from the book of Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem, in Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. 
And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in the east until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of the Lord. Good morning, church. Merry Christmas and a joy-filled New Year to you. And more importantly for us this morning, happy Epiphany. Epiphany is technically always on January 6th, and it is the 12th day of Christmas, as in 12 drummers drumming from the English carol. But since we seldom ga actually gather on January 6th itself, we're celebrating Epiphany today. Even more than Christmas itself, Epiphany was considered to be a holy day. In the earliest days of the church, we have evidence that it was regarded as the second holiest day of the Christian year, second only the Easter Sunday. Yes, more holy than Christmas, can you imagine? In fact, other than Easter, it was the only other day that the early church celebrated baptisms after churches settled into formal settings like this one. Why, we might wonder, would early Christians put so much emphasis on this day, on January 6th, on Epiphany itself? and the appearance of the Magi at the side of the young Jesus and his family. Epiphany comes from the Greek epiphaneia, and it means the appearance. Google's dictionary defines it as a manifestation of a divine or supernatural being, as in God. In popular use, we often think of an epiphany, though, as a flash of insight, or perhaps seeing the light for the first time. Like the legend of Isaac Newton getting bumped on the head by an apple, Epiphanies tend to be a bit jarring and may have had the power to recalibrate our entire worldview. On Epiphany Sunday, therefore, we celebrate the appearance of God in the flesh, the incarnation of our all-powerful Lord in a frail child's body, entrusted to a very humble family. This child's presence will tip the scales of those in authority and will begin a faith movement that will set the course of history even to the present day. As a pastor and teacher, I love to spend time in small groups, digging into the scriptures and applying them to our everyday lives. But the moments that I live for are those when somebody realizes just how earth-moving the gospel really is. You see, it's not a quaint story to me about people who lived a long time ago, or some nice information to memorize with little relevance to us today, but a nice story. No, the gospel at its core is good news for everyone because it's a story of liberating grace that really does set people free. Humanity may have built its own sin, but grace is the key that unlocks the door, and it is the tool that we need to set our fellow prisoners free. Grace makes possible what cannot happen otherwise, and Jesus himself said, I assure you that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, go from here to there, and it will go. There will be nothing that you can't do. Matthew 17, 20. When I see someone's face light up because they get that God's grace is given to them and they get to share it with others, well, those are the times I can't help but smile the widest because they're realizing something. In fact, in those precious moments, I think to myself, I think I just saw the kingdom of God get a little bit bigger in this moment. Maybe you've had moments and been blessed with times like that. Sisters and brothers, there's power in epiphany. 
But even those pale in comparison to the epiphany, when we see God show up. So let's turn our, to our gospel reading today and see what happened on that very first epiphany, when the creator of all things had been born to Mary and Joseph in Bethlehem. Matthew's Gospel tells us that sometime after Jesus was born, perhaps as much as two years later, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? In verse 2. This was a huge problem for King Herod, who didn't know anything about a new prince being born, and who history paints as being very paranoid about even his own family overthrowing him. He even had some of his own children killed to avoid losing the monarchy. Verse 3 says that King Herod was frightened. I suspect that when it says, and all Jerusalem with him in verse 3, Matthew's telling us that they feared Herod response, Herod's response. Indeed, when the Magi later fail to return and point him to the newborn prince, King Herod will send soldiers to wipe out every child near Bethlehem under the age of two just to make sure they got this new prince. By contrast, the Magi themselves were likely not even Jewish. They were most probably Zoroastrian astrologers, perhaps from what is now modern-day Iran. They were students of the stars and practitioners of magic. The English word magic comes from the same root word as that of Magi. Whereas King Herod heard about the star and the birth of the newborn king and responded with violence and a desire to regain control and dominance, the Magi saw the star and so an opportunity to gain favor with a new power. Matthew 2.11 tells us that the Magi brought three gifts to honor the child. We know them well at this point, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Gold has a variety of uses, of course, and will become incredibly useful when that holy family needs to flee to Egypt soon after the Magi's visit, dodging King Herod. Frankincense was burned to appease the gods, but may also have been used as an anti-inflammatory agent. Ancient Egyptians, for example, used it to treat arthritis. Not that I would suggest we go out and do it, but that's what they used it for. And, uh, and Psychology Today actually reported last year that recent publications suggest that it may have anti-anxiety and even anti-depressive properties. Well, as for the myrrh, it has traditionally been pointed out how myrrh was used to prepare bodies for uh, ritual burial. Everybody dies eventually, but that seems somewhat of a morbid gift for a young child. How many of you were looking to give your grandchildren or children myrrh this Christmas? Probably not on their wish list. It does somewhat foreshadow for us, however, that this child has been born, that has been born will someday die for our sins in a horrific fashion. But perhaps this is a bit of a more practical gift. Myrrh was often used in liniments throughout the Middle East, and it's actually more potent than morphine for pain reduction and can be used to reduce inflammation. So perhaps these gifts were as much as, they were for, as much as they were for Jesus, they were also for Mary, an opportunity to gain favor of the mother of this newborn prince of peace. In either case, however, the Magi saw the star that guided them as an opportunity to give God honor, at least honor to this child and his family. In the story of the Epiphany, we see God in the flesh, but what will our response to this great sight be? Herod reacted with fear over what he saw, and as he sought to regain control over the changing circumstances, his actions incited fear in others and led to violence that most of us would find inconceivable and unforgivable. In somewhat of a laughable contrast, however, the wise magi follow a star that leads them on a long and dangerous journey to lands unknown. They unwittingly share their secret with the wrong guy when they do stop to ask for directions, and whatever expectations they had were dashed when the king that they found was living in the house of a poor carpenter and his wife. Wise magi indeed. And yet we would still call them wise, because their response to the opportunities that they saw was to try, even if the odds were against them. Some of us, upon encountering the modest accommodations of the child where their expectations appear, may have gotten frustrated and gone home with their gifts, but the Magi did what they came to do, and they paid Jesus homage. I wonder, beloved, what you see in the new year, 2023. There is no shortage of problems that we could focus on, no lack of issues that could rightly attract our attention. But I assume you've had enough of those issues. Amen? 
As we begin 2023 together today, perhaps we can spend some time looking up. Where do you see the star overlooking some holy happenings, some movement of the Holy Spirit? Maybe stargazing has never been your thing, but can you see a glimmer of Christ in the twinkle of your neighbor's eye? Look for the Christ you might see in others, the potential that God has planted. What is God showing you, church, and what are you going to do about it? In the story of the birth of Jesus and the Magi's visit there, there is a profound truth. God is not so far from us. Emmanuel is here, and the kingdom of heaven has come near to us. Now it's up to us to decide how we will respond. Will you and I come and give God all honor, glory, and praise like never before in this new year? It's pretty easy for most of us to turn on the computer in your pajamas or even to get dressed and drive to church, but will we go to greater lengths to bow our heads to our Creator or to lift our hands in a testimony of praise? Will we honor this holy Prince of Peace without reservation, with our uttermost devotion and the full conviction of our hearts? And when we've received the blessed bread of heaven for ourselves, will we be willing to share it in the year 2023? There's a whole world out there starving for grace, for someone to show them compassion and mercy and forgiveness. And I know that we are in need of God's grace like never before ourselves. It seems that we're all on a healing journey these days in one sort of another, but the secret to a grace-healed life is that you have to let this medicine flow through you and out into the world. The only way that it carries away our sin and sets us free is when we let it slide right past us. It does no good if we try to hoard it. So let your love deepen this year, your love for God and your love for people. And as a way of doing that this year, as we begin this time, I invite you to go and to look at the insert that you were handed as you came in this morning. Simply think about what you can do this year. Where do you see God? Where, how would you like to respond? How would you like to seek God? Take a few moments and fill that out for yourself. You don't need to turn it into anyone but the Lord. Simply make it a covenant between you and God this morning. And if you're watching online from home, I ask you to seriously consider how will you deepen your relationship with God and with people this year? In Jesus' name, amen. Oh God, in this new year, we lift up our hearts before you and we praise and honor you this morning, oh God. God, we give you the first fruits of our year, this very first day. And we thank you, Lord, that we are here this morning, here with us together in spirit, Lord God. We are gathered here in this place to offer our hearts to you. God, we ask that you would bless this year. Take the parts of our hearts, Lord God, that do not belong and Push them aside and wash them clean. And Lord, and for those parts that you value, we ask that you would take these glimmers of hope within us, Lord, and nurture them. That you would use these talents, these gifts that you've given us, that you've shared with us. That we might share with the hurting world, Lord God, the gospel of grace and goodness. Lord, we pray that you would wrap the world as in a special blanket, as you were wrapped that very first Christmas. Snuggle us in deep, Lord, and let us know that we are loved and cared for. God, we begin this year, not with trepidation or fear, but with love. Loved by you and loving one another. So God, we lift up today all those on our prayer list. And we offer prayers in particular for those who need healing, guidance, protection, and whom we celebrate. Lord, we lift up in particular prayers for those who need healing, for Betty White and Danny McCarthy, for Wes Sprague, Gary Suttle, Colleen McGuire, Robert Hayhurst, Michelle Sanchez, Helen Kegaris, Jonathan Gadzini, Tommy Buckelman, Maureen Seiler, Noah and Heather Shear, Thomas Ratton, Ed Morgenstern, Mike Callahan, Reverend Adrian Brewington, Frank Gatland, Hassan Derek Cohen, Andy Gatland, 
Bev Byer, and Shalik Cohen. Loving God, hear our prayer. God, we pray for those suffering from COVID-19 or its aftermath and for an end to this pandemic. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray for comfort for the family and friends of Greg Goldhorn, Janet Wildermuth, Ed Wells Jr., Paul and Rita Hentz, Scott Windus, Marie Malloy, Diane Schilling, Bill Daniels, and Lee Scott Sprague, and all those in mourning today. Loving God, hear our prayer. Oh God, we pray for those who need guidance, for our world, national, state, and local leaders, for Bishop Bickerton, D.S. Julia Yim, and the leaders of our beloved church, especially our new leaders who will start their new terms today, for our medical and mental health workers, and for our world set free from the bonds of prejudice and hatred. Loving God, hear our prayer. God, we pray for those who need protection, for all of our military personnel and first responders, for our frontline workers, including those in the mental health profession, for those in our schools. Loving God, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for those whom we celebrate, in gratitude for our families, friends, and co-laborers for the kingdom of God. Loving God, hear our prayer. This morning, I'd like to change up our usual pattern and invite those with us online to lift up their prayers first this morning. Would those with us online please lift up their prayers at this time? For strength and courage for President Zelensky and the people of the Ukraine, for those battling cancer and ALS. Loving God, hear our prayer. For those seeking to make a change this year, whether um, striving to set themselves free from an addiction, um, for those who are trying to make a healthier life choice, and for those, God, who simply are trying to break old habits and step into new positive changes. Loving God, hear our prayer. God, I pray a prayer for anointing of the Holy Spirit upon our church as we minister to each other and to the world around us. And I pray especially, Lord, that this year we might see, God, that people would become to, begin to come closer together as we've been so divided in recent years. I pray, God, that you would give us a spirit of grace with which to hear one another, to love on one another, that we would release the anger and fear that we have felt for far too long and enter to a time of peace with each other. Loving God, hear our prayer. Lord, whether we speak our prayers aloud to you or offer them to you in the whispers of the heart, we know that you hear our prayers and your response is always born of your steadfast love. And so, Lord... Since you always come when your children call, we offer the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now offer of ourselves and our gifts. Will the ushers please come forward to, to collect this morning's offering? And we thank you for all those who have given to us in this past year. And I'm pleased to say that our Finance Committee reports that all of our bills from 2022 have been paid, and our donations to our apportionments for our annual conferences, good work, and the ministry of the church around the world have been paid in full as well. So church, thank you for your commitment, your stewardship, and for the gifts that we have shared with the world in 2022. God bless you all. The ushers come forward.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. O loving and everlasting God, receive these gifts from our hands and our hearts. Use them in the service of your kingdom that we might bring all peoples together, that we might share with them the love and grace of God, and that we might experience what happens when we turn our crowns before you. Oh Lord, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would use these gifts, that you might bless others and bless us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess, confess that, that we, have we have not loved, loved you with our whole heart. Whole heart. We, have we have failed, failed to, be to be an obedient church. church. We, we have, have not, not done, done your will. We have, we have broken, broken your law. law. We, we have, have rebelled against, against your love. love. We, we have, have not loved our neighbors, neighbors. and we have and not we have heard not the heard cry of the needy. Forgive us, us, we pray. pray. Free Free us for joyful obedience obedience through Jesus Jesus Christ Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name name of Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, you are forgiven. forgiven. Glory Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is is right right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good thing and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, 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 Holy Holy Lord, Lord, God of power power and might, might, Heaven and and earth earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He thanks to you, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Please repeat after me. Christ has died. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ will come again. O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and those with us online and upon these gifts of bread and wine and those at home. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, the ground of our hope, and what makes us ready to go forth into this world. Sisters and brothers, I invite you to come forward this morning. Come up to the altar and I will hand you the elements. As you receive the body and blood of Christ, you may do so by taking it to your seats or taking it to the communion rail to receive it privately and then returning to your seats. I hope you'll come down the center aisle today and we'll go down the sides. And to our sisters and brothers at home, this is the body and blood of Christ given for you. Would you all please join me in the prayer after receiving this morning? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you please rise as you feel comfortable as we sing, Go, Tell It on the Mountain. We have good news to share, time to share it. May this year be a year in which we tell the good news from the mountain and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching O'er silent flocks by night Behold, throughout the heavens There shone a holy light Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. The mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born 
Down in a lowly manger, the humble Christ was born, and God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. And now, sisters and brothers, may we go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. May Christ be with you wherever you go. And may the peace of Christ fill your life to the point of overflowing so all the world may share in the peace and grace that Christ has given to you. Go in peace now, sisters and brothers, and the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Amen.